bring peace, but not as the world gives. You bring joy in the midst of our grief. You're the light who shines in our darkness. You bring hope when we struggle to see. Prince of Peace, everlasting Father, mighty God, so wonderful. You bring peace, but not as the world gives. You bring joy in the midst of our grief. You're the light that shines in our darkness. You bring hope when we struggle to see. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Hello, welcome to St Wilfrid's Cow Plain online service. You might be watching live at 11am on Sunday the 21st of June or catching up with this video on YouTube or Facebook at any time. Wherever you are, in Cow Plain or around the world, whether you are a member of St Wilfrid's another church or none, you are very welcome. And on this Father's Day, a big welcome to dads everywhere. Enjoy your day. I hope that you will feel part of our online worshipping community. And I especially hope and pray that you will meet with God through this service. Today, we are thinking about peace. Now, peace is difficult sometimes to explain. We often find it hard to put into words. But so often we feel when we lack in peace. Jesus offers us true peace. Peace that's beyond our human mind's understanding. Peace that transforms us. My prayer is that we will each know God's peace in those most inner places 
in our lives, in our beings. So let's say together, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Thank you to everyone who has worked incredibly hard to put together today's service. Yet again, it is wonderful to have so many involved, both in front of the camera, but also behind the scenes, helping with filming and working to bring it all together. Thank you. Good morning. As always, it's great to be able to come together to worship this morning. And we're going to start with a hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Now we've all fallen short. None of us have met God's perfect standard. We all need God's forgiveness. So let's come to him and confess our failings, knowing that he is full of compassion. And let's believe that when we are truly sorry, the Bible calls it repentance, God will forgive us and renew us. Lord, Lord God, we, we have sinned, sinned against, against you. you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the special prayer for today. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to sing about how we can lean and rely on God because of things like his everlasting kindness, faithfulness, grace, mercy, peace now as we sing these next two songs. So as we come to this time of worship, shall we prepare ourselves in prayer? Father God, thank you that you are with us even though we are apart. And I pray that as we worship you now, we might learn a little bit more of you through your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let it affliction. 
Thank you.
For 2,000 years, Christians have been declaring their faith in God. So let's say together. We, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Will will now bring us today's Bible reading. It's Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. And Alice, Isla and Sue will then share their thoughts and reflections. Today's reading is taken from Philippians 4, 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. We're asked here to rejoice, but in the Lord, not in our circumstances. Whatever our struggles, we can be sure that God knows, and we are able to draw on his strength and comfort and wisdom, whatever we need, and he is able to provide it. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the Lord is near, it says. Knowing Jesus' love and forgiveness for ourselves enables us to be more gentle with others. A quote I recently came across, whose author I don't know, says, Be kind and gentle. Everyone you meet is fighting a difficult battle, which makes sense to me. And this is something I know I need to work on. Verse 6 says, do not be anxious and encourages us to pray about everything, whilst also being thankful for the good things in our lives. For many of us, worry is our natural reaction to difficulties and uncertainty. Yet here we have the antidote. Give our worries to God and trust him for the answer. I know that this is something that takes practice. It's not easy. But the more we do it, the more natural it becomes. And we need to remember not to take those worries back. Only then will we know that peace that passes understanding. I'd like to finish by reading the message version of those verses, which is a contemporary translation of the Bible. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ is faced as worry at the centre of your life. Amen. God can give us peace. He can us like the birds. He can like still water. Like flowers, deep around you like a bubble. Be soaked you like the rain. <laughs> Be comfy like bed. The theme for today's service is how do we find peace? And I wonder what your idea of or vision of peace is. Is it a deserted palm fringed beach in the Caribbean? Or maybe you'd love to climb to the top of a deserted mountain or row out into the middle of a lake? 
or maybe the, for the dads this morning who've been home for these 12 weeks of lockdown trying to manage childcare and working from home, perhaps it's just the vision of a shed at the bottom of the garden with a padlock on the inside. I think the word peace conjures up for us images of quiet and stillness and lack of stress. But in the reading that we had today from St Paul, he's really writing about something quite different. <clears throat> he's writing about that inner peace which comes from knowing that you're right with God. <clears throat> and in another letter that he wrote, he put it like this. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the language of reconciliation. Because the Bible says that because of our sin, we're all estranged from God. But if we confess that sin and ask him to forgive us, then we come into a right relationship with him. And so we can have that inner peace. Some years ago, I went to see my doctor in the morning and he arranged for an urgent appointment for me with the A&E in the afternoon. I was seen by a young army medic who quite bluntly said to me, I think you have an aneurysm and if it was to burst, you'd only have two minutes to live. So I'm going to admit you straight away. And within the hour, I was in a single room and hooked up to a drip. Well, you can imagine the effect that had on Barry and I. He was not allowed to stay with me and I was left on my own, in a room on my own. But I, and he went home and he contacted people to pray. But when we left, we didn't know whether we'd ever see each other again. But I can honestly say that I felt a complete inner peace and I even managed to go to sleep. And when I woke up some hours later in the early hours of the morning, the first thing I saw was one of Barry's fellow chaplains standing at the nurse's station. He'd been called in during the night to see someone. And it was just as though God had sent a guardian angel just to be there to give me some comfort in those early hours. The peace of God uh, is supernatural, but it can be ours when we commit to him. But he can also give us that inner peace for every situation we might find ourselves in. You know, some of the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples were, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. And when he appeared to them in that uh, room after the resurrection, three times he said to them, Peace be with you. Now, I'm sure we all love to receive gifts, but wouldn't it be strange if I gave you a gift and you said, Oh, thank you very much, and you just put it to one side and never bothered to open it? Jesus offers us his peace as a gift, but we have to appropriate it and act upon it for it to have any effect. In the um, message version of the Bible, it says this, Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, and before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. I can hear you saying, well, that's all very well for Paul to say that, but he doesn't know all about my situation. Well, that's true. But let's remind ourselves that when Paul wrote these words, he was in a Roman prison awaiting execution. And yet still he said that he had the peace of God. And he even said, rejoice and be glad. Lack of peace is something which affects all of us from time to time, no matter how long we've been a Christian. And I think it's been especially true during this period of lockdown. 
people's normal routines have been disrupted. But peace, according to the Bible, is one of the defining characteristics of the people of God. So how can we maintain that serenity? In the book of Isaiah, we read these words. You will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is stayed on you. And Paul, in this passage, urged his readers to fill their minds with things which were true, holy, upright, pure, attractive and virtuous. But this runs directly opposite to the habits of mind instilled by the media. The newspapers and the TV and the social media are full of things which are untrue, unjust, impure, vicious and blameworthy. So if that is the kind of thing that fills our mind from day to day, how can we ever experience the peace of God or hear his voice? Now this is, I think, not to say that we should not be informed about world affairs or sit around reading our Bibles all day, but we can consciously choose not to fill our minds with rubbish and negative attitudes, but rather the words of Jesus. For instance, yesterday I listened into the early morning news and it was full of gloom about the economic crisis which is looming. But then I read my daily Bible reading and it said, Godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out. And really that put everything in perspective. Which of those two things do you think brought inner peace to my heart? Going back to the time when I was in hospital, you see I was admitted suddenly and I had no access to a phone or computer or even a Bible. I was just left alone all night waiting to see a consultant the next day. But during those quiet hours, I was able to recall verses which I'd learned years earlier, some of them when I was in Sunday school, and they brought comfort and peace. None of us can predict when we might be in a similar situation without the support that we've come to rely on. So it's important now, I think, to prepare ourselves while we can. This terrible pandemic has brought sorrow and distress and confusion to so many lives, and it will continue to do so as we face the economic problems in the coming months. But as the people of God, we have a message of hope to bring to those who are feeling hopeless. Being shut away from human contact may have caused us to become anxious and afraid. But Paul wrote that the peace of God transcends all understanding and it will guard our hearts and minds. This morning, God holds out to us that precious gift of peace, but we have to grasp it and let its power permeate our lives. Because the peace of God comes from the God of peace. And he is our loving Heavenly Father, who knows what we need, even before we ask. Now may the peace of the Lord be with you.
I'm convinced that God is with us now. It doesn't matter where we are, or even when we are watching this service. God works despite lockdown. And he wants you to know him with you today. Now Jesus is the source of true peace. As Sue said, he reaches out to us, offering his peace. God is our loving Heavenly Father, who knows exactly what we need, even before we ask him. But there is a but, and it's a big but. The truth is, we need to be willing to reach out to him, to grasp and to receive his free gift. That's when his peace can permeate our lives, soak us, and actually change us. So we're now going to be quiet for a short time. It's your chance to engage with God, to ask him to soak you with his peace. Be real with him, don't hold back, and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you afresh. Then in a moment, we will pray together. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I come before you ready to pour out my worries, anxieties and fears at your feet. I receive your promise for blessings of peace and strength over my life. Bring a peace into my body, my mind, my spirit and my soul that passes all worldly understanding and make me a light for others to see your love and your strength. Amen. Bob will now lead us in our prayers. In our uh, reading this morning, Paul writes, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Um, during the lockdown, I'm sure many of you have been taking daily exercise. I find that when I go walking, it can be a good time to pray. During the last few days whilst I'm walking I've taken some photos and we're going to be using these during our time of prayer this morning as we come before the Lord. So let us pray. We thank you Lord that we can pray anytime, anywhere. We thank you for parks and open spaces, places where we can exercise and play. Help us to use these areas wisely and care for your creation now and for generations to come. And may we be good stewards of all that you provide. As we begin to come out of lockdown, we pray for all those who have been self-isolating and for whom going outside may cause anxiety or worry. We pause for a moment to bring those known to us to the Lord, asking for his peace to be upon them. We pray for those suffering broken relationships in homes resulting in domestic violence. We pray for your protection on those who are vulnerable and for healing and your peace to be upon them. And Lord, we pray for a spirit of peace between men and women of different colours, cultures and creeds. Touch the wounds that racism has inflicted. Heal those who have suffered verbal or physical abuse and make whole the people who inflicted those hurts. And may each of us know your peace in our hearts, in our daily lives. We thank you for the NHS during this time of coronavirus. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers and all medical professionals 
who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace and in times of physical of emotional exhaustion, may they know the strength of your healing love. And we thank you for our local surgeries and pharmacies, for the service they provide to keep us safe and well. We pray for the many key workers who have continued to work during the lockdown, providing essential services for refuse workers, postal workers, those involved in public transport. We thank you for them, asking that they may enjoy a time of rest and relaxation. We pray for our local shops and businesses affected by the lockdown, for those affected financially, for those furloughed on reduced pay, for those who have been laid off and are now unemployed, for businesses that have closed down. We pray for opportunities and support for those seeking work. We pray for our local schools, for Padnell Infant and Junior, for Queen's Enclosure and Cape Lane Comprehensive. Give wisdom to those planning class sizes and layouts. We pray for head teachers and all teaching staff for the burden of responsibility as they work to educate our children in a safe environment. Watch over and protect them. And we pray for preschool and toddler groups, for parents and children missing that social interaction and the hope that it won't be too long before they can get together again. And as we prepare to open our church again, we remember and pray for all in our community that use our church and halls. For the many groups, for Little Fishes, the Ark, Messy Church. We pray for wisdom and discernment for the way forward as we seek to be a blessing to the community. And so I invite you now to join in with a prayer for growth. God of mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, power to our witness. Help our church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you and in service to our local community through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us close by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
If God has been speaking to you, and I'm sure he has, well, don't just let it drift away. Why not watch this service again? Read and chew over today's Bible reading. It's Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. And do take some time to pray. If you want to chat with someone, or someone to pray with you, do please get in touch. If you have questions arising from today's service, or if we can help you on your spiritual journey, please email me. My email is vicar at stwilfridscowplane.co.uk and I will be in touch. Join us again next Sunday at 11am for St Wilfrid's online service. Each week we're on YouTube and Facebook. And all our services and other videos are available to watch at any time. If you're watching live, join us now on Zoom for coffee. And don't forget morning prayer on weekdays at 9.30am on Zoom. And our weekly Bible study is on Wednesday evening at 7.30pm, again on Zoom. Don't forget our new series called Faith Stories, available on Facebook and YouTube. Each Friday at 4pm, someone from St Wilfrid's will speak about how Jesus has impacted their life. If you've not watched Julie's and Sonia's stories, take a look at them now. And finally, we're pleased to be able to announce that St Wilfrid's will be open for individual private prayer. Of course, we need to take things carefully in order to keep everyone safe. Opening our church isn't like opening a shop, so at this stage we have to be quite limited. Starting Monday the 22nd of June, if you're watching live that's tomorrow, our church building will be open on Mondays from 11am to 1pm and Thursdays from 2 to 4pm. Sadly we can't yet hold any services and don't forget that two metre social distancing rules are still in place. Lord Jesus, fill us with your love and peace each day this week. Come Holy Spirit and be our comforter and guide. May your peace flow from us so that we might bring your hope to those who feel hopeless. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. bring peace but not as the world gives you bring joy in the midst of our grief you're the light who shines in our darkness you bring hope when we struggle to see Prince of of our grief You're the light who shines in our darkness You bring hope when we struggle to see Walk
walking in darkness I've seen a great light as the dawn breaks Shattering shadows The valley of death falls No fear in the night For He's with us God is with us Those walking in darkness I've seen a great light as the dawn breaks Shattering shadows The valley of death falls No fear in the night For He's with us God is with us He's the Prince of Peace Everlasting Father You bring peace.